Okay, so a quick a quick overview of what kind of EVs are on the market right now. From biggest to smallest mm -hmm. in terms of trucking industry, fleet industry. Um, America usually take um, somewhere between class one to class eight all the way. The biggest we consider as six, class six to eight. The battery size is usually 400 kilowatt or even up, you know, for longer haul, a bit larger than that. The medium size would be school bus, typical school yellow school bus, 150 kilowatt. And then there's cars, vans, trucks, uh, picker truck, pickup trucks. And these are usually in the 60 kilowatt to 100 kilowatt space. So these are our major clients, majority of our clients and how they categorize each other. Now, our reality, a couple of quotes. Number one is um, California Governor Newsom has a pretty ambitious goal. And based on Newsom's goal, really 30 DC fast chargers needs to be deployed in California every single day from right now to 2026. Every 30, every day needs to be 30, 30 fast chargers. And that is a massive. So that's number one quote. Second quote is our fleet owners, operators, they have a huge gap between their infrastructure and their readiness of fleet. So they got the fleet, they got the new truck from the dealership today. However, the infrastructure readiness is nine months away. It took nine months to do instruction, uh, it, construction, to do permitting, and permitting is you know another fun stuff, right? So, and then there's a huge backlog for one of the companies. This is a Tritium, a NASDAQ listed companies. In 2023, they had a backlog, 149 million backlog. They've got so many sales and deals signed that they could, could not be work fast enough to fulfill their workload. So that's the reality. Summarize it. Here's the expectation. We hope we have permanent charging infrastructure ready before the fleet, before we get our electrical fleet. That's the wish, right? The second wish is we want to have adequate powers, three phase for 80 volt everywhere in the world. And then what's the reality? Construction cost is high, supply chain backlog, operator not owning the parking lots. Um, that's an interesting thing. And then there are single phase 280 volt or 240 volt. So let me bring your more, more color in this. 80% of America fleet do not own their parking lot because fleet is focus to be their fleet operation. They don't want to be the real estate owners. So 80% of fleet owners actually they lease their parking lot. So that means they have a less incentive to put in permanent infrastructure. And then also, interestingly, that's another 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of America small to medium business buildings only have 208 volt to 240 volt infrastructure. So there's a huge gap between expectation and reality. And that's how we find our market. We decide to innovate. We decide to innovate this new charger, which is a plug and play, avoiding construction, which is a four portable, or we, we can call it semi-permanent. It's flexible and there's no construction. So let's take a look at our product. Again, two product lines are more mature in the market already. One is the AC level two. You've seen this in many parking lots already, you, especially business and school parking lots. It's a pretty mature product line. The other mature product line is level three. The ones that you see usually at the highway corridors. DC fast charger, fast, strong. And there's still a great place for that too. 
However, we find our niche. We call it level 2.5. It is still output, we can do DC, but input, we utilize AC. Utilize AC 208 to 240, and we can still utilize three phase 480. And you can see the statistic, the specs are quite in the middle of these two, but really provide a niche, provide a solution, provide an option for our customers. And this is this design on the wheels is our first generation. We just came out with a second generation. So I'm showing you our second generation of product line. You can see first product line is luggage size. This is actually a carry-on luggage size, quite compact. Our clients like it. They move it everywhere. And then the second and third, we are moving toward skid, skid models, because skid is e Our customers knows how to transport skid. We particularly designed the holes so that they can have their forklift in and ready to go anywhere they want to go. Again, 20 kilowatt to 30 kilowatt, first model, 90 kilowatt, second model, and the highest is 360 kilowatt. 360 is kind of future proof right now. Majority of the high power cabinet right now is about 100, 120 kilowatt to 150 kilowatt. 360, we are really trying to get ready for that EV explosion for the what if 50% of the vehicles are all electric vehicles? In, we're really getting ready for that, that future. Yes, please. How heavy are those units? Very good, good questions. So this one is about 60 to 70 pounds. This is about 200 to 300 pounds. And that's heavier. I, I have not tried lifting it up yet, <laughs> but it, it is for sure heavier. The, the, this I have personally transported these two. So um, um, we want to, because for 50 to 60 pounds, 60 to 70 pounds, you know, one or two person is movable. For this, it's kind of borderline. And that's why we decided to put on a skid. And also skid is easier to transport from point A to point B. <laughs> so that's why we have, and also the protection is already building so that in a parking lot, it's more visible. And that's something that protects our equipment well in, in the application during our, our use case. So we're going to talk about some, a bit of a design in, because we are in the engineering school. Um, my understanding is we utilize single phase AC First, we use inverter to invert AC to DC, make it 500 volt DC. And then we use inverter DC to DC all the way into the BMS, which is battery management system in the vehicle. And this is a simple, simple sketch. If you have more questions on the engineering side, I have my CTO and my co-founder sitting in the room too, so we can discuss more in, later. Okay, so let's talk more about the competitive competitors. You've seen charge point. Um, Stanford's parking lot garage has quite some charge points chargers. This is a charge point DC fast charger. Uh, what's in Stanford's garage is usually AC level two. High price, um, strong power, but you know we can somehow be comparable. The construction time is high. And then this is another competitor. They're from Netherlands, from Europe. Um, this competitor is called Helix. Um, good thing about Helix is one day, no construction, just like us. However, it can not utilize 208 volt. It has only have to utilize 480 volts, three phase. So again, like I said, the 80% of the application, they're missing that 80% of the United States client needs. So that's why, um, that's why we're here.
and the pricing is, you know, in the middle. Again, try to be competitive with a lot of competitors. I, I promised that you guys that uh, we're going to talk about two user cases. This is one of our user cases, Penske. Uh, majority of our fleet are Ford e-transit, so which is the third uh, um, delivery event that we talked about. So the client does not own the parking lot, typical, right? For 240 volt infrastructure, again, typical. And we can cut down their charging time from four hours to one hour, which means previously, if the driver can only drive half a day and then the rest of the half day, the, the truck has to stay in the, on the parking lot versus they can do their run, first run, have their lunch break, charging, and then do the second run. So obviously, huge efficiency boost, production uh, productivity boost. Second. So second client. Um, I think I muted it already. Somehow I didn't. Okay. So the second client is a municipality in California. So munis munis municipals have a huge push from government funding and also from constituencies that to electrify their their um, garbage trucks, their equipment. And this is a typical garbage truck. And this, uh, as garbage truck, this is one of the biggest, 400 kilowatt battery. And with that bad, big battery, if we were using a level two charger, it would take two entire days, 48 hours to charge the whole garbage truck. Obviously not feasible, right? So we absolutely need a level two charging. With our semi-permanent infrastructure, with our with our this equipment, that's four hours. If with our DC fast, the cabinet, high power cabinet, and that's even faster. So this is really a very reasonable um, solution for us. So we actually um, have it in use right now with one of the municipalities in Southern California right now. So that's our two client cases. Our traction and timeline, again, uh, it took some time. It really took some time. Um, we really took some two years to get our prototype ready, secure IP, manufacture, all those good stuff. Uh, we have joined it, California Energy Commission test bed this past year, and we are uh, we already have our commercial deployments. We have a UL, you know, all those good stuff. And next year, we're planning to have more UL certification, product line expansion, and also hire more people and expand our warehouse. So these are what we have been doing. And this is our four line of product, new product line. Um, I want to point out one thing. This is a portable CCS. So CCS, is, CCS plug work with anything but Tesla. So that the other 50% of all kinds of electric vehicles. The second product is our Tesla specific charger. And this is one of a kind because not many chargers in the field right now are Tesla. And none of them are portable like us, are semi-permanent, just like one day installation like us. And this is a Tesla native. So it charges all kinds of Tesla from old to new models directly with Tesla dispenser. So I want to make sure that I'm proud of it. <laughs> of course, I'm a little bit biased. And then this is our skit, smaller on the skit, and bigger, big high power cab high power cabinet on the skit. Again, this, although this does, this model does put on the on a ground, however, it has a smaller slim profile, 
and, and again, this is one of our new products. So just want to show you our four products. A couple uh, things we have been doing, uh, attending auto shows, attending uh, trade shows, and uh, very good crowd. Always uh, people will come in and ask a lot of good questions. So that's very good. Gross, uh, lots of inquiries. Our last November, we did a seminar in one of the trade journals online seminar webinar. 700 people signed up, 700 people signed up. And our website saw 300% traffic in. So um, people are definitely interested and these are our peers. You know, I feel very honored to be recognized by our peers. Um, again, in inquiries exponentially increase and pilots exponentially increase. And there are some good names here. <laughs> I'm not going to read everyone, but you know, these are our clients right now. So, and that's our, how we fund our product market fit. Now I want to switch gear and let's talk about more about the community, our community impact. This is a Mac of Palo Alto, if you can recognize it. Okay, so a couple of things. Do you, these are where the chargers are located in Palo Alto. Now, could you tell me what color do you see most? Is it probably brown and green, right? Okay, so let me tell you this. Do you know these brown ones are private? So you might see, oh, lots of brown. However, lots of brown are behind the parking, we call it behind the net. In a business parking lot that usually is not open to public. And this is, okay, this is the Google campus. They've got a lot of chargers, but usually not open to public. And public not going to go to you know, go to a Google's garage to, to charge in the middle of the night, right? Lots of run. Okay. And then the green. The green are public. However, they're level two. So they're slower. Really? Can you find some orange? A couple here, right? A couple, a couple here. These oranges are really public and fast. So out of the whole map, it's interesting. You might see a lot of chargers, but really the fast and public chargers are the minority, not the majority. So what can we do? What can we do about it? I think the answer, we can deploy faster. <laughs> Let's compute the cost. Make sure that we can deploy to community centers, libraries, park, multi-unit, apartment buildings. So these are great for community centers and parks and libraries. We are closely working with Palo Alto Utility on this. And this is another model that is great for business, parking lot, school, public school parking lot, so that it's open to the community. My vision, my personal vision is, today we see about 10% of the parking space are electrified with parking, with EV chargers. But down the road in the future, we should have 30%, 50% of the parking space electrified because look, 50% of people, 50% of new car purchase are EV in Palo Alto last year. And it's going to be even more. I'm sure it's going to be more. So what we need to want to do is not only provide fast and strongest electric chargers, but also provide cheap <laughs> and massive production chargers so that more parking spaces can be electrified at a low cost and a fast fashion and benefit to the whole community. 
So that's my our vision. And this is that. That's our product line. And I want to I want to share with you that we are open for internships. So if anyone is interested, feel free to talk to us. With that, any questions?